Hi guys, uh, following on from the uh, PS2 Amiga mouse and keyboard switch project uh, typically known as a KVM switch except I've got no interest in uh, switching the video because I'm using multiple monitors um, I've got the unit assembled and ready to test uh, as a unit uh, in previous videos I've tested both parts um, so you have PS2 keyboard and mouse connected here um, and then a, a keyboard and mouse connector for the port of each computer and this one's got serial broken out because there's a serial port present in the keyboard uh, port of the Amigas I use one of them uh, isn't expanded in any way so to access serial I need to do it from here but essentially yeah keyboard port and mouse keyboard port and mouse computer one computer two uh, a couple of output LEDs to show which computer is selected and uh, the PS2 mouse that's connected to the unit is used to switch both the keyboard and the mouse to one computer or the other. It is actually the uh, the controller that translates for the mouse that uh, does the selecting of the computer and tells the keyboard chip uh, to switch over. Uh, with this green wire, it's simply high or low, and uh, the keyboard will act accordingly. I did start out making a schematic which uh, does cover the keyboard uh, controller and uh, only partially the mouse, uh, but it's already a, a bit of a tangled mess. Um, and I'd probably have to start again. I'm not sure I'll do it though, uh, maybe if requested, because I don't think too many people would, would do this, the full one, Amiga, the, the, the full uh, KVM switch or KM switch. Now for all the ribbon cable, uh, it won't be there. Um, I'm planning on uh, cutting the whole lot close to the circuit board and uh, leading that out to a connector, so there will be uh, uh, some kind of connector through a case, um, and after that I can actually salvage the cords from PS2 keyboards for the keyboard side. Then for the mouse side where the Amiga has all nine pins connected, um, I'll have to find a, a supple enough cable because if I buy a nine conductor cable from my local supplier, it's not very flexible. So I'll, I'll find something for that. But um, I am hoping to have some yeah, you know, supple black cables for the whole lot um, leading off to plugs plugged into a box. So as I was saying, this is actually the first test and the first take of this video segment. I expect it to work because I really haven't changed much from when I tested the mouse switcher and the keyboard switcher separately. Uh, the only difference is the boards are screwed together uh, with standoffs and there's simply one connection made between the pair of boards and they're, they're earthed together through the cabling. So your PS2 and mouse input here uh, for this mouse and this keyboard. And then uh, there is a master computer that powers the thing. So I haven't actually connected the, the positive supply rails for um, 5 volt rail across the two computers. Uh, I'm not sure that's safe yet because these inputs could have uh, polyfuses or anything so I don't want uh, one computer to sync current from the other while it's off. Um, or, yeah, turn lots of nasty flags go off there. Um, the chip being powered from one computer while it's on through input ports rather than uh, the VDD supply rail. Um, so uh, an easy way around that is just to do a 5 volt supply for the thing separate and then you can turn any computer on in any order. But for now, um, to try and keep it streamlined, it's assumed that this computer's turned on first to power the thing. So um, in a practical situation, that's actually true for me. Um, this is a, a development to debug program, so I want to compile on this computer, uh, serial over to this one and run on this one and be able to have a program running while looking at the editor on this one to edit source and, and be able to see a program running while looking at the source. Um, so practically for me it works. So I've booted both computers and this is uh, the, the boot screens you see on both of them. One's booted from CD, the other from hard drive. Um, there's some usable stuff on the CD so you can type and move the mouse. Uh, the LED indicators I've stuck with some goop on the side here for this video so you can see the switching. Um, it'll normally be in the box, in the enclosure, so it would be normal. But um, that works as expected. We're supposed to default to this computer, which is this computer. Um, and I'll open a text editor in both of them. Uh, tools. Sognus. So keyboard works, and I want to use switch. Um, I need a shell for this one. 
and the keyboard should already be working because the mouse switched it over. Okay, it looks like a success, or maybe not. <laughs> the keyboard didn't move. <laughs> so, something going on there. The keyboard's not switching over. <laughs> so it started on the right computer. I can sort that out though. I can do a reset of the keyboard shift. <laughs> so the only thing that could go wrong in theory uh, was wrong. So the, the keyboard not switching because that's the only thing I'd changed from uh, testing the unit separately. And I found that I'd uh, made port A or the code made port A all the outputs. Um, this is actually uh, Tris A because uh, this is a program disassembly, it doesn't know which bank it's looking at. could be port A or Tris A, but since the um, bit for the, the bank is uh, cleared here, it makes this all uh, the port uh, set up, and below here where it's set is uh, the Tris set up. So uh, there's been, port A has been made all outputs here, and the I've just made the input by setting uh, bit zero. Um, I expect it to work. So both computers freshly booted again for take two. I'll give it another go. I don't know how that input was ever working on the keyboard when, when the input was an output, <laughs> when I tested it separately. I did have to use a, a hard switch though, it wouldn't work um, uh, with a, a single pole switch with the uh, normally tied up with a resistor. I did have to switch it hard, high and low and wondered why that was. Okay, so working on the first computer again. Switch to the second one. And I just want the keyboard to work now in the shell. Work, yes, success. I love it. Caps lock works, go yeah, back, yep. All beautiful, so to switch whole computer, keyboard and mouse, it's hold down the middle mouse button, which I haven't implemented through the Amiga, because it's hardly used, maybe later Amigas use it, but um, you yeah, hold down the middle mouse, which is under the scroll wheel, and then press either side to do the switch. Um, and, yep, all working. I love it. I'm happy now. So now I can make the case. Um, yeah, cut up these wires, get make it all neat. Ends up being a, a fairly small unit for a KVM switch would normally actually be bigger than that. Um, and as I said, I'm not interested in video switching. A KVM switch would traditionally you'd have uh, one keyboard, mouse, and video. Uh, you might have up to ten computers, and you only have one uh, workstation terminal looking at the whole lot of the computers. But I'm uh, aiming to actually spread them out because I do want to use both computers. So there you go. I don't think, uh, well, yeah, I don't think there's going to be another video on this because that's that. Um, and I don't know what's next. So stay tuned. <laughs> See you later.